I'm writing an article about using the Papilio Pro as logic analyzer and for that I have made a simple I2C setup. I've chosen I2C because it only has two wires and it's quite easy to explain. Uh, I have linked the two wires from I2C, the clock and the data wire, to my Papilio Pro. Uh, and then I'll be using this as a logic analyzer and record the traffic that is going between those two boards. The example that I'm using is very simple. I'm just initializing the I2C peripheral of my Zeregego and sending one I2C command and listen to the reply. Let's now have a look what we can do in the logic analyzer to get our signal. The first thing we'll do is prepare the capture. And uh, we need to do a few settings. Uh, I'm using my Papilio Pro as a open bench logic sniffer compatible, so I keep it to that. Uh, the port here is uh, correct, COM7. It's typically the second port of that uh, Papilio Pro. In the acquisition we'll take the highest frequency here to start um, and enable run length encoding that gives us one channel less uh, to probe but we're only probing two channels but it gives us much more time that we can capture I'm using the maximum mode here I'm going to enable the trigger on the clock so once the clock goes down my signal will uh, trigger the logic analyzer is armed, our program is ready to run, so I'm now going to start it and we'll have a look at what's happening in the logic analyzer. Okay, we have signal. You don't see a lot at this moment because everything is clubbed up, but if I expand you'll see that we are getting to our I2C signal. Let's now change a few settings in the logic sniffer uh, to make this picture more understandable. You saw in the setup in the beginning of the video that my clock signal was the green wire and my data signal was the orange wire. So let's do the same here in the logic analyzer. I'm changing this to green. I'm changing the second one to orange. And that's already done. There we go. So that gives me the same colors in the logic analyzer as on the physical connections. What we see here is the schematic of the Zero Gecko and the signals that I'm using is here the I2C uh, clock and the I2C data. So we'll give our logic analyzer labels the same name as the signals of the Zero Gecko. I'm copying this one, moving to the, the logic analyzer client and I'll change the name here to the clock. I'm switching to uh, the, s the schematic again, copy the second name, the name of the second signal and paste that into the second signal of my logic analyzer. There we go. This is already a better picture. We now see what signals we have here in our view. The third thing that I'll do is I'll make the second signal higher because I'm going to use the I2C analyzer and that's going to annotate the signal. If I don't give that signal more space, the text of my analysis will override the signal. So I'm going to double click here and make this uh, a height of 70. And that gives the, me enough space to read the analysis results. And let's have a look at that I2C protocol analyzer. If you go to tools, there is uh, a selection here for the I2C protocol. I press the Analyze button and we have some success and some failure here. I believe that if I would remove the auto select and say that the clock was channel 0 and the data is channel 1 and analyze it again, I'd get better results. Don't mind the bus errors because my implementation is a bit so-so. Uh, all in all, uh, we have an analysis of the signal that we have captured. And if I close this window, you'll see that if I zoom into the right part of the code, you will find some of my I2C actions back. So this is the clock signal that we're seeing here. Uh, this is my uh, data signal. And these are the datas that we are capturing. There is also a measure mode here in the logic analyzer. If I enable that, you get a measure cursor. 
um, whenever you jump uh, left or right in your signal you can do measurements we see here that my I squared signal uh, was at 82 kilohertz